Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is 10 to Life where we talk everything true crime. As a reminder, if you are listening to the podcast version of this case, but you want to check out the video version so that you can see the footage that I include and some of the crime scene photos, case videos, you can always pop over to YouTube and check out the video version at 10 to Life. And for those of you who are right here on YouTube with me today, thanks for joining, whether you are a new subscriber, old subscriber, or future subscriber, because it's free. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button below, um, no matter who you are and where you're tuning in from. I'm so happy to have you guys here with me today. So thank you so much for joining. Today's case is another current one, and officers are asking for the public's help in locating a corrections officer and an inmate who went missing last Friday, April 29th. And this is literally like ripped out of the headlines from what is that case? What it, and they made it into a TV show or a series. It was like Escape from Danamora, Donamara, something like that with um, Patricia Arquette, right? It's very aligned with that and several Lifetime movies. I'll just mention that as well. So the circumstances are weird and the disappearance does not seem like it was at all an accident. So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to go over all of the details, everything we've learned and where things stand today. Lots to unload, lots to unpack. So guys, buckle up and let's dive right in. Tend to life with Annie Elise. Starts right now. Vicki White was an employee of the Lauderdale Sheriff's Office for 17 years before she went missing last Friday. Her specific job title was the Assistant Director of Corrections at the Lauderdale County Detention Center. Her coworkers absolutely just adored her, and she was the type of employee that everybody looked up to and everybody aspired to be. Now, Casey White, the inmate, was the polar opposite. However, they do have the same last name, which has confused a lot of people, but they are not related. And Casey White has a complex criminal history. And when it was discovered that he was missing, he was actually serving a 75 year sentence while waiting on trial for two counts of capital murder. And one story of his is particularly insane. On December 2nd of 2015, Casey went on a crime spree that spanned across two states. He started in Alabama, where he approached his ex-girlfriend's house and pulled out two handguns on her. Thankfully, she was able to escape and run to her neighbor's house, but there were two men still in the house who were held hostage. The two men were able to escape through a window and then ran to the next-door neighbor's house unharmed while Casey was firing shots at them as they were fleeing. And these men left behind two kids in the house and a dog in the house, which, first of all, I get it. They always say, put your mask on before somebody else's, but who would, would just flee a house when there's like a crazy person with guns and kids in the house? But that is a question for a different day. Thankfully, the children were completely unharmed as they were hiding inside the basement. But Casey did kill the dog in the hallway. He then fled the scene on foot and ran to another nearby home where he demanded money from someone at gunpoint once again. The man told Casey that he didn't have any money and then Casey just stole the car. But it wasn't done there, and Casey was not done there. After stealing the car, he crossed into Tennessee from Alabama. And 30 minutes after stealing the car, he approached a woman in her car at the Tennessee Welcome Station. The woman refused to open her car door, so he fired multiple gunshots into her window. She was hit in the arm, but thankfully was okay after receiving treatment at the hospital. Still, this like a lunatic on the loose with a firearm. And apparently, that wasn't enough for Casey. Right after he shot this woman, he fled with the car he had previously stolen and hijacked another car. And the second carjacking victim told police that Casey jumped onto his 18-wheeler, holding a gun in each hand, and told him, you're going to drive me. The truck driver went back into a sleeping area, then Casey drove back to Limestone, Alabama, where his crime spree initially started. Police tried pulling him over, but he took them on a high-speed chase instead, going well over 100 miles per hour, and while doing that, shot through the windshield. I mean, just like a scene out of a Western movie or something. Although I know that they don't have like 18-wheelers and car chases like that in Westerns, but you get what I'm saying. 
So, I mean, this guy is just absolutely insane. Finally, he stopped at a trailer park and led officers into a standoff where he placed both guns onto his head, threatening to unalive himself as well as threatening unaliving by cop. So if they, if he shoots, he gets shot, you know how it goes. So officers talked with him for over an hour before he finally peacefully surrendered. And in Alabama, he was charged with two counts of first-degree burglary, robbery, and theft. Then in Tennessee, he was charged with attempted first-degree murder, two counts of attempted carjacking, carjacking and theft over $10,000 as well. He told police that if he was ever released, he would kill his ex-girlfriend. Not something that you necessarily want to say to police, especially before you get fully arrested, go to court, get sentenced. Not very wise. Not very wise at all, Casey. So he was convicted and sentenced to 75 years. While serving his sentence, in June of 2020, he began writing letters to authorities asking to speak with a specific investigator. One of the letters said that Casey wanted to talk about a murder that had gone cold, saying that he could be the one to solve it. Connie Ridgway was murdered in October 2015. It was a gruesome, gruesome murder in which she was stabbed to death. So the investigator spoke with Casey, and Casey admitted to the murder, but also said that he was paid by somebody to kill Connie. In September of 2020, he was indicted by a grand jury on two counts of capital murder. He later recanted his confession, saying that he confessed because he didn't like being in the prison that he was at, and he wanted a change of scenery. And if that really was the case, he is an absolute, complete, and total idiot. But prosecutors are positive that he will be found guilty on this murder charge as well. And his trial for that is set to begin in June. In October of 2020, he was transferred back to Donaldson Prison after jail officials found a shank hidden in the shower that he had made, and they learned that he had been planning an escape. And at this point, it had been made completely clear that two officers needed to be with inmates to transport them no matter what. So he was brought back to Lauderdale in March of 2021 for just four months. He was there while he underwent a mental evaluation and quarantine for COVID-19. He was moved back to Donaldson in August of 2021. Then finally in February of this year, they brought him back once more to Lauderdale to prepare for his upcoming trial. The prison and the courthouse are two hours apart from each other, so it wasn't feasible to leave him at the prison with the upcoming trial. It needed to be closer. So now that we've gone over the backgrounds and the background of Casey, we can discuss how the two of these people crossed paths and how they both went missing together on April 29th and the possible signs that were leading up to it. So on April 18th, Vicky sold her home for well below market price. Her house sold for just $95,000, but her home's listed value is over $200,000. Now, if you have been looking at the market at all in the past year or so, this market that we're dealing with is crazy. Houses are often going well over asking price, sometimes by hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it seems extremely odd that she would sell for 95000 when it's valued at two hundred. It almost seems as though she was trying to offload it as fast as possible and possibly accepted a cash offer. And if the highest amount of cash that somebody had to put down with no loan was ninety five grand, it's very possible that that's why she settled for that amount so she could just have the cash to help her as she goes on, you know, this new journey as now a criminal. Vicky was also set to retire the same Friday that she went missing. She had been talking with coworkers about going by the beach and living there and just enjoying retired life. And she seemed extremely excited for what was to come in her retirement years. She was also set to have a meeting this week to discuss her retirement pension and all of that good stuff that goes along with it. A few days before she went missing, Vicky also visited a used car dealership and purchased a 2007 Copper Ford Edge. So April 29th, that Friday, it started out like any other day at the jail. People were transported to the Lauderdale Courthouse for their court dates as usual. And Vicki told the booking woman that she was taking Casey to the courthouse for a mental evaluation and then was going to head to get medical care because she herself wasn't feeling well. Since the other inmates scheduled to appear had already left with transport, she said that she was just going to take him by herself to the courthouse because she was the only officer with a certified firearm. And remember, she was the assistant director. So while the rules about two officers for transport still apply to her, 
it's not like the general booking staff is necessarily going to question or correct their boss. So they said, okay, Vicky's going to take Casey to the courthouse since transport already left. And you can see Vicky getting Casey into the car. Now, what sticks out the most is the fact that Casey is obviously, from his history, an extremely violent inmate and an inmate that had previously plotted to escape. And Vicky wasn't even holding on to him in any type of way, trying to secure him or make sure that he wouldn't flee or hurt her, which is the first major red flag here. So after they left the jail, they never went to the courthouse. Big surprise. I think we all knew that was coming, right? There was also no court hearing or mental evaluation scheduled for Casey that day. In fact, traffic lights caught them at an intersection eight minutes after leaving the jail. The intersection was close to a shopping center parking lot where they ended up ditching Vicky's patrol car. They got into this Ford Edge that she had just purchased and drove off. And she had brought the patrol car to that shopping center the night before as well. And nobody realized that she was missing for over six hours. And by that time, they were long gone. They were in the wind, as you would say. Investigators began probing to figure out where the two of them maybe had gone. And they quickly realized that Casey and Vicky had a very weird relationship. While Casey was at Donaldson prison, Vicky apparently would go up and visit him. And that started in 2020, after he had been moved for his plotted escape. So the two of them spent quite a bit of time together at both visitations, and throughout the times that he was at the Lauderdale jail, they also spent time together. Inmates also gave information, saying that Casey received special attention. The attention came in the form of extra privileges given by Vicky and having extra food at mealtimes and things of that nature. And those things are obviously things that inmates will quickly take notice of. If somebody is getting preferential treatment or more food at mealtime or more yard time, as they say, like inmates are going to notice that and they are absolutely going to be upset by that. So it's something that would be memorable in their minds. Now, at the time that Vicky went missing, for a bit, nobody was sure if Mickey was held hostage or if this was planned and she was a part of it. Yet eventually, investigators realized that the two of them likely had a romantic relationship and that this was a planned escape. Romantic relationship in the sense of, was it truly a mutual romantic relationship or was Casey pretending to be interested in Vicky because he needed her help? Still TBD, we don't quite know. On May 3rd, an arrest warrant went out for Vicky, charging her with permitting or facilitating escape in the first degree. The description of the car was also accidentally released, and the sheriff stated, We had worked all weekend trying to get a vehicle identified, and we finally got solid confirmation on Monday morning. And so we were trying to take advantage of the other technology available to us and see if we could find the vehicle. 
we put the information out to law enforcement so they could be helping us look out for it. And one department put it on social media. And of course, it spread like wildfire from there, which was kind of a good thing and a bad thing that news of the car spread so quickly. It was a bad thing because police and investigators really wanted to utilize technology, digital things to try to get the jump on Casey and Vicky. But it was a good thing because the accidental release brought in hundreds of tips. However, none of those tips have panned out, and investigators now are worried and believe that if Vicky and Casey haven't dumped the car already, they absolutely are now going to dump the Ford Edge, and it's going to set this manhunt back even further. The investigator on the Connie Ridgeway case has also now spoken out. Following a 2015 crime spree in two states, Casey White was arrested in Limestone County and subsequently sentenced to 75 years in prison. Former Limestone County Sheriff Mike Blakely says White spent several years in the Limestone County Jail before his conviction. But after he was transferred to the Donaldson Correctional Facility in Bessemer, Blakely says he began receiving letters. After he was in the penitentiary, he wrote me several times, one time telling me that he could solve a murder for Lauderdale County. In further correspondence, Blakely tells News 19 White was desperate for a transfer. It's my understanding, according to Casey, he'd been shanked a couple times while he was there in prison. He didn't like it down there and wanted to get back in the county jail. After confessing, White was charged with the murder of Connie Ridgeway in 2020. He later pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease to those charges. Prosecutors said White claimed he was paid to kill Ridgeway. He was set to go on trial in April of this year, leading to his return to the Lauderdale County Detention Center for pretrial motion. But that trial was continued to June. And White is now on the run with the jail's assistant director of corrections, Vicki White. They're probably trying to put as much distance between this area uh, and, and themselves as, as they possibly can. Blakely issued a warning for the public. I would suggest that anyone uh, that comes in contact with him be extremely cautious. And not only that, any officer that comes in contact with him. And an invitation to Casey White. Call me, come see me, let's see if we can straighten this mess out. Friends, family, neighbors, and former inmates are all confused as to how this happened. A former inmate expressing shock over the deputy now suspected of freeing the massive six foot nine convict. Everybody loved her. Nobody, nobody had nothing but good things to say about Vicky ever. In this small Alabama community. I, I think they left the area. They had a six hour head start. Many are playing armchair detective with curbside chats turning from confusion to concern for the deputy. I think she maybe was thinking that they were going to have a relationship. Yeah. He's playing her. Vicki White's former mother-in-law worried about a woman she says would never stray far from home and loved her family. I figure he should have done something to her. Well, he probably you knew her, you loved her. She was that type of person. Just a Awesome lady. Lifelong friend Debbie Burbank doesn't think Vicki acted alone. Vicki's always been a good girl. I went to school with her. It's got to be they do that? other people involved, and Vicki's just a scapegoat. Others who knew her say Casey White manipulated her. I feel like if she had anything to do with it, it was definitely love because I don't see Vicki doing that because she's always loved her job. Sheriff Singleton believes the pair had a two year non sexual relationship where Vicki showed favoritism toward Casey by giving him extra food. I talked with a local attorney who worked with Vicki for over 12 years, oftentimes two or three times a week, and even spoke with her the day before the escape. And just like many others, she says that Vicki White's alleged crime came as a total surprise. When I spoke with Vicki on Thursday, I thanked her for her help. And one of the comments that I made was that, you know, there are a lot of people in jail that have no one to help them. And I couldn't ever have imagined what happened the next morning. So we were all very shocked, disappointed. They talk about the stages of grief. I mean, I feel like a lot of folks who knew her or thought we knew her well are going through that, from denial to, you know, anger and so forth. Even people who worked with Vicki are completely in shock about this. They never saw this coming. And as far as Vicki's behavior and her track record, Vicki's own mom didn't believe it initially. That's how out of character apparently this was. As a mother, that I didn't know what I didn't know how to act, cause I, you know, I thought at first it was a mistake, and then when I found out for sure it was, I, it was just a d disbelief. Complete shock. 
That's how Vicki White's mother, Pat Davis, describes what's been going through her head ever since her daughter disappeared with accused murderer Casey White Friday morning. I lay in there at night and it, you can't get it off your mind. And then when you wake up, if you do fall asleep, that's the first thing that you think of. You know, if you got a kid and she's out there, it's just like, you know, she's in danger. According to Davis, Vicki had been living with her for the past five weeks, ever since she sold her house. Davis says her daughter didn't speak about work often, never bringing up retirement, and never mentioning inmate White in conversation. You know, I never heard of him, never seen his picture, nothing. I didn't know anything about him. It's still unclear what role Vicki played in helping inmate White escape the Lauderdale County Detention Center. We don't know if she was took by force or if she was voluntarily in this, but we just want her back. That's all we want. She doesn't think her daughter would ever help an inmate escape. She's never done any, I doubt she's ever even had a speeding ticket. But I mean, she's always been, what I'd say, a good person. And like I say, this is all a shock. All she wants now is to reunite with her daughter, no matter what. We want her home. We'll go pick her up if she'll just call and tell us. Come and get her, we'll go pick her up. And Casey's mom is coming to his defense quite a bit. And Casey's mom said, I just have no idea why they've painted him as a monster. The only reason he came out to Lauderdale County was to get out of the prison he was in. He wrote a letter to say that he murdered that woman, but he didn't really murder her. He just had done that to get back up here. He just wanted to be out of that prison because it was so bad and there was no food. He is not the monster they are making him out to be at all. Now this kind of just floors me because is she really acting like he is innocent and not a monster? Has she at all looked at his record ever? Has she realized that her son admitted to a murder and said that he was paid to do it? He shot a dog. He said to police that he was going to kill his ex-girlfriend Is he ever, if he was ever released. Normal people who aren't monsters don't do that stuff. Sorry, lady. They just don't. Normal prison inmates who aren't monsters don't admit to a murder to move prisons. It's in my opinion that she is literally, quite literally, delusional. And the fact that she defends his every action may mean he was never made to ever take accountability for things in the past and that maybe that plays a part in how he got to where he is now. It also leads me to believe that she may end up helping them on this journey as they're evading police and trying to escape and get away because she clearly thinks that her son is not a monster and is innocent. So I would imagine that she would probably go to his aid and help him if he, you know, came upon her doorstep. The ex-girlfriend of Casey, who he had said that he wanted to kill, is currently in hiding for her safety and for her loved one's safety, which is absolutely terrifying because he absolutely could blame her as to why he's incarcerated. And the fact that he is now on the loose is absolutely unsettling because you don't know what he's capable of and you don't know where he's capable of going. So she moved to another state after he was arrested, and her identity has not been released, but she did talk to a news station about Vicky and the situation. She said that she found out that he escaped from a friend in Alabama, and her message was, if she is still alive, she needs to get the hell out. Run. Run as far as you can and turn yourself in and contact somebody. Like, do the right thing before you lose your life or somebody else does. She went on to say that the local police promised to set up patrols, but that they were freaking out. We don't know if he's going to show up and take us like he had tried to do before. Saying, I thought I would never have to worry about him ever again. Casey White is very dangerous to everybody that is around him. Now that Vicki White is officially on the run, she has of course been terminated from her job and will no longer receive her pension. A lot to risk for love. And I'm doing that with air quotes for those of you listening to the podcast because I don't believe this is true love. I just don't. I think it is an opportunist using this woman. Not to say she isn't guilty. She 100% is. Her involvement, like if she's helping him flee and like helped escape, certainly she's guilty. But love, eh, eh, I don't think so. I'm calling BS on that. The U.S. Marshals are working diligently on this case and are engaging in a nationwide manhunt. They said that the car dealership has been very cooperative as well in this investigation, contrary to what social media has said. There is currently up to a $15,000 reward for the location of Vicky and Casey, and anyone who knows anything or sees them is urged to call authorities. 
Now, I would love to hear your theories on this in the comments below. First and foremost, where the heck do you think they are? Do you also think that Vicky made all of these big moves in preparation for being on the run, selling her house, buying the used car, all of those things? Do you think that they truly are in a romantic relationship and he cares for her and she equally cares for him? Or do you think that he was using her and kind of playing the part all of this time to get her on board with helping him escape so they could run away and live this fantasy love story together? I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. So share your thoughts below and let's get the conversation going. I'll be following this case closely and I will keep you guys updated as soon as we learn more. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so so that you get notified of those updates. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the case coverage. Please don't forget to give this podcast a five star, give this video a thumbs up, leave your comments below, and we will get the conversation going. All right, guys, until the next case, stay safe. Bye.